So what do we got? Uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is another video. I'm switching up this time where I'm talking about view. Um, but once again, I am using Ionic Framework. Ionic Framework is my framework of choice because I can use it in view, I can use it in Angular, and I can use it in React. Um, what I have here is this is a type ahead project. So we can type and I can select a specific user and I can save the selection of the user. For those who notice, this is all using um, Ionic components in here. Uh, this is the Ionic card component and this is just a item list. But um, uh, we got the type ahead working. If you also notice, we let's save the selection. We have our um, we have our our CSS done, so we get the nice kind of overlay, so you can see how the card is appearing on top of the text that I type there. And um, the last bit that's really cool about all this stuff is that um, it's written using the View Composition API. I'm not going to type through all the code here for you. I'm just going to walk through the sample application that I've built already. And you're welcome to just go check out the source code. I, um, I'll post it in GitHub, but then also you can see it in Code Sandbox. Um, we'll, let's go to main.js first to see the basic stuff you know you need to get loaded. So if you're going to use View Composition API, in um, uh, view two, you have to load in this. Um, you have to install this additional uh, npm module to support it. You set it up using the use composition API, and then you're good to go. Um, my app. What I've done here is this is the Ionic component right here that's um, going to draw the items that I find. And then below it is this autocomplete component that I've written. This autocomplete component that I've written, it takes in uh, two options, three. So options, this is whatever is the data that um, you want to search through. The key is what field on the data you want to search. So in this example, I'm using random user me. So this is going to pass in the array of results from random user me. And then this here is going to uh, specify the key you want to find it on. And the key I'm searching on is email. And then this is an event that's emitted when I select an item that I want to uh, display below. Um, like I said, so here's my get data function. It's called startup, which gets the data and loads it. Here's the um, save result, which renders it to the screen. And then on my created um, lifecycle event is when I grab the data um, to display it. Down in the bottom here, you see this is the magic of the CSS where I'm positioning this result section, which is this this object right here, I'm positioning it right below the um, the the uh, input field, so that when the card comes down, this field does, this this div does not slide down. My card will draw over top of it. Okay, so now let's take a look at the uh, the actual autocomplete component that I'm using. So here's the buttons that we have across the top of the screen. Here is my text input. I'm listening on the change for the input. And then I'm setting the value here into my uh, user input. My It's bound to the user input. And the user input is coming from my... Oh, let's let's eh, yeah let's go ahead and do this the user input is coming from my autocomplete hook uh, my autocomplete hook is passing back this is pretty cool how it does it my autocomplete hook is passing the selected function uh, the on change function um, and then the user input is a string the, of the text that's being typed in the input field is being passed into my hook and then the hook keeps track of the filtered suggestions the suggestions, which is the um, the options that are passed in, is, is the suggestion. And then a selected item ref when you select it. So let's go back to the um, to my uh, autocomplete component. Here, so here inside my autocomplete component, I come down to the setup section, which is how you use these hooks inside of you. And the cool thing is that all of the objects that I'm returning from my use autocomplete so you can see here's my state. So all these objects are being returned and they're all going to be reactive. And then I'm also returning two functions that can be accessed uh, from whoever's using the hook, the selected and the unchange. 
So, um, the, let me get back to my, yeah. So here I am back in my component. So I start up, I'm taking those objects that can be returned and they're getting bound to this view component. So I have access to them from inside of here. So that's where I get access to the, uh, this user input. As this change is happening, it's going directly into my hook, my use complete hook. So that's how it's filtering the list. Um, once I'm done and I actually select a object. So as I'm typing along here, my hook is filtering the suggestions because that's getting returned. And the filtered selections, as you can see, are this is the filtered selections that are showing up in the list. And so what's happening is that if I have any filtered selections, I start to add ionic items to my list, which is what you're seeing here, and they start to show up. If the user selects one, um, then we're taking the information based on the one that's selected and we're setting it, we're setting the item in the box to be that. So when I've selected this, and remember to select it is coming back from my hook. So get onto my hook. We're getting the selected one here. So when I select an item here, it's calling the selected function, which is in my hook. And so then my selected function, so then now my hook has keeps track of which items in the box. So then when I click save selection, it can actually extract the data that's associated to the object and render it to the list. Um, and when it does that, that's when it fires off this event. And then once that once the event is fired, I emit my save options. Sorry, once the event is fired um, on the do save. So here's my do save. I click do save. I emit an event. This emit the save option event, which then goes back up to my parent. My save option is gets the save result. It pulls the data off the save result and it logs it out so I can see what the selected data is. Um, that's it. Like I said, I just wanted to kind of walk you through what I had done. Um, I know sometimes when codes just posted the GitHub, there's not a lot of comments in it. It's like, what the hell is going on here? So that's what this attempt is attempt here to do. Um, once again, hope you found this helpful. If you have any suggestions, um, leave a comment. Please like and subscribe. I've been looking at my analytics. Tons of people are looking at my content. I'd like to have a couple more people subscribe. Um, but I just appreciate the visit. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day, evening, or morning, whenever uh, you're viewing this. Thanks, and bye.